So here we start out the private by just feeling each other out. Me kind of following a lot of numps like noise flow, but he also follows much of mine. So a lot of the pad work that you will see in Thailand is not really dictated by the trainer if you don't let it be. Meaning, if you come to Thailand, a lot of the pad work will be dictated by the, uh, by the trainer. However, if you begin to freestyle, many of the trainers are able to adapt to you and your style. So it's almost like they're going to give you a stock set of punches and kicks to throw, which is the basic, you know, T, jab, one, two, knee, rear kick. However, if you start to blend your own rhythm and style into it, then they can start to adapt. As you see here, I'm throwing some of my own teeps to break up the rhythm, to find my range, and to be able to freestyle just a little bit. Numsic noise starts to adapt. He knows not to maybe catch the kick or the punches right away. He keeps the pads closer, uh, closer to his own body and reacts accordingly. Knowing this can really save you a lot of frustration when it comes to working with your trainer. Let's say you have a sense of creativity that's within you or within your way of swagger, but just the way the pads are being held and maybe move forward at you, they're rushing you. This can be changed by adapting yourself pretty much not to throw the punches when the pads are sh shown right away instead doing it when you're actually ready when you're balanced when you can get full extension on your punches or kicks here you can see now signal check on my ringsmanship skills shifting to his left side see how i follow up do i cut him off with punches here he pretty much keeps the pads down lets me freestyle just how we talked about being able to get creative, see what type of openings I can create, and then for him to catch the pads. It's a relationship that takes some time to build with your trainer. Uh, it's not 100% here as it's been over a year and a half since we worked together, but you can tell that we do have an unspoken connection here where I understand that I need to get creative whenever there's spaces within the pads or he must adapt to some of my style, some of what I want to do while I still follow along with what he gives me and the openings he creates. Here's the first technique that we're going to break down that you see me doing on the pads here. It is a switch step elbow or a step through elbow. Either way, you're getting in your opposite stance. You're creating momentum from switching through the op opposite stance, either by stepping back and throwing the elbow or stepping at your opponent forward and through to throw the opposite side elbow. So it comes from the rear, has a ton of power behind it, and it has the momentum from the stance switch itself. So as you see, I switch my stance. As I grab the glove, it creates an opening, and then I continue the momentum that I got from switching my stance into the elbow itself. I was able to utilize this against a fellow American opponent who was a very tall fighter using the momentum to be able to cut him and eventually get the stoppage via cuts.